So we forgot our ladders. No, don't get the nest down, just get the apples down. Are there bird eggs? Are there birds in it? I don't know. Kaya, can you get them? I see it. Got them. Right there. Uh, look in. Hi. Hi. I'll take you. You let me spend. Wow. <laughs> we are picking apples. And so, this is amazing. Hey, don't break your remember. You need to move up? Yep. When I'm canning or butchering, it's a really, really good idea to put something in the crock pot so that it's ready for dinner or lunch when you're ready to eat. So I'm gonna cook that a little faster. Um, because you're canning and everybody will need to eat and unless you have made lunch, there will be no lunch unless you're doing applesauce and then it's really, really hard to keep your energy up unless you've had a really good meal. So crock pot it. And I put this on, I don't know what time I put it on. Mr. Dirt is cutting down a big pine tree um, for his dad. He got called last night to do that. So this morning he is off cutting a pine tree. And that's probably him. So we're all working today. Okay, this is my $20 uh, secondhand store pot. It is very heavy, heavy stainless steel, very heavy. The bottom is like, I don't know, three quarter of it three quarters of an inch thick, has a very solid bottom. It is a regular professional grade pot that my husband saw at a secondhand store and they and he bought it for 20 bucks. I use it for everything. You could use it for pressure cook, or not pressure. You could use it as a steam bath. Um, you don't have to have one of those steam bath pots. Um, that this will work just fine. It's just a big container. You would want a screen in the bottom again and it has a good lid so you could just do your hot pack canning in this too. So it saves on redundancy. I butcher, I dip chickens in this when we butcher. I make cheese in it. I'm gonna do applesauce in it now. I use it for everything because it's just such a good sturdy pot. When you're doing applesauce or fruit leather or something else that requires mashed apples, you don't need any special equipment. All you need is a big pot with a couple inches of water in the bottom and then you pack the apples in once they're clean. Um, into your pot and then you steam them. I have this in the bottom to keep the apples on the bottom from burning. So it just holds them up off the actual pot base. And we will show you how we do this. Okay, summer apples do not stay good. They have a very, very short shelf life. Um, without refrigeration, you once they're picked, you've got like a couple days to get them done at most especially if they got bruised. So don't, don't get ahead of yourself, especially once they're washed, they can go bad. So do one batch, one batch meaning what will fit in your dehydrator and what will fit in your pot, one batch at a time, but keep the batches moving. Spend those days that you have doing up your apples. If they start to go bad really fast, what you can do, is put them in two quart, one gallon size jars and put them in your fridge. And then as you're ready to do your fruit leather. Okay, I picked these apples in two gallon buckets. I prefer to keep them in the two gallon buckets because they are smaller, they are easier for me to lift and since I'm the one processing them, that really counts. If I didn't have them in buckets, I would very carefully sterilize my sinks, scrub everything down, including the stoppers in the bottom. I would fill one sink up with cold water and maybe a little bit of chlorine. And then as I was finished, I would have a bowl here. And as I took one apple from here, I would probably rinse it off, make sure all the actual uh, visible dirt comes off. 
Um, I'm gonna let these soak for a little bit. These are summer apples and they do have some wormholes in them, but not very many. When it comes to applesauce and everything, you're steaming them. So they're very hot. Anything that's in them is gonna get killed anyway. And because it's going through an applesauce maker, you're not gonna know if you're getting a bug or not. So there's bugs in food. We eat bugs all the time. It's To me, it's not a real big deal. So these are summer apples, red Harland, and what was the other one they said? Um, his winter apples are sweet 16 and was it sweet 16? I think it's sweet 16 and red Harland are, are his winter apples. And I don't remember what his summer apples are, darn it. Anyway, um, if you're really worried about what's on the surface of your apples, you can put a little chlorine in. I don't know if I'll do that with these or not. There was some bird manure on it from the trees, but not a lot, so we'll see. Okay. Once you have a bowl of, of clean washed apples, you're gonna cut them in half because it allows the steam to get through the skin faster. So it cuts down your amount of time. You could just put them in whole and it would work. But having ruptured that skin makes it uh, steam much, much faster. So this is Paige and I'm cutting apples. We're making applesauce. The apple grinder is right here. That is for grinding something else and the red and yet gray thing is for peeling it. The apples, we're making applesauce. Now I'm cutting apples. See how I banged? Now let me show you how smooth I got. See how smooth? It doesn't show anything that was missed and it's not lumpy and and having mm, apples, um, apple, um, kind of not in order. Instead, it's smooth and in perfect condition. And this is the bucket where the apples are coming from. Drop it in hot. Now, okay. Are you focused in on uh -huh. what we're doing? Uh huh. Spring goes on this. Uh -huh. This, this is the new one. I had the old one that took a little bit more practice to do. The reason I didn't like the old one is because of just how much aluminum there was. And um, this one has more plastic. If you don't want the plastic leaching into your food, then you need to do it cold. Um, you don't have that much reaction if, if it's cold. However, I do it when it's hot because I want it to go through quickly. So I do get some leaching plastic and aluminum into our food. So there's that. I'm gonna turn it so it And you go twist on. it. Page. Okay, so. Put it on, turn it. Let's see if I can get it to the right spot. Paige, please don't lean on that. No. Nah. I've got to take that all the way out. Do you need help? Turn and then clamp this down. This just hooks into the back. Yep. And then you keep grinding when it's fixed. The, the nice thing about the newer ones is that this just snaps on instead of having to make sure that everything is perfect, this just snaps on, which is really, really nice. The other one, it was like this huge jigsaw puzzle. Huge, huge jigsaw. Okay, I'm handling the camera. So it just snaps on, and then this goes in like that. Let's move this over here. It's the almost the whole thing, and there's that. that okay, that so that's ready to go. There. You need a big. Are you focusing uh -huh. or looking at your sister? You need a big low container here, mm -hmm. and you need a smaller container here to catch the pulp. Mm -hmm. I like to dehydrate the pulp for the goats for winter treats. Mm. Push stop. Okay. 
play with your consistency. My first batch was much, much thicker. This is just about perfect. I had to get a lot of water out of the bottom to use. And um, the way that you know that your apples are ready is that when you stick a fork in them, they just feel soft. They don't need to be mush to be done. They just need to be tender. Um, and I do not put any kind of sweetener in my uh, dried anything. I do not put honey, I don't put sugar, I don't put anything. Dried fruit is very high in sugar, um, which would be fructose, that's the fruit sugar. So yeah, you can, you can give somebody a really bad case of diabetes just with dehydrated fruit leather and dehydrated fruit. So don't worry about adding sugar unless you really love sugar, I guess. But I, if, this is, if the point of this is to have a healthier snack, don't put sugar in it. 